the 2014 Conference on Retroviruses and Opportunistic Infections, Dr. Ronald Baldessari from the Department of Health and Human Services spoke with Dr. Jonathan Merman, director of the National Center for HIV-AIDS, Viral Hepatitis, STD, and TB Prevention at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. What kind of information does CDC have about how we're performing as a nation when it comes to the HIV continuum of care? Well, Ron, um, we've seen some very encouraging results recently. Uh, right now, we uh, estimate that about 84% of all people with HIV in the nation know that they actually have HIV. And that's the highest rate we've seen yet in, uh, in the history of the HIV epidemic. That's great. That's great. And um, let's talk about then how people act on that knowledge. Uh, what are some of the statistics related to of the percentage of people who know they're infected? How many are getting into care? And what can you tell us about positive trends in that area? Well, it's important that people who are diagnosed with HIV access care and prevention services quickly. Uh, current guidelines from uh, the Department of Health and Human Services recommend that um, e everyone with HIV be offered antiretroviral therapy. It uh, helps them live a longer and healthier life and also helps them prevent transmission to others. Uh, so we've seen um, that linkage to care is increasing in our estimates. Uh, in uh, some jurisdictions and uh, in some programs. And as uh, it becomes increasingly emphasized by clinicians and, uh, and HIV care programs to help people who are diagnosed access regular care, access antiretroviral therapy, and then take their therapy regularly so that their, their virus is suppressed, that we hope to see increasing levels of viral suppression in the whole community. Great. Now, we know, and I know you know, there are, for certain individuals, for certain communities, there are challenges with not only getting diagnosed, but even after someone's diagnosed, being able to get in care and stay in care. And um, uh, whether we're talking about uh, poor women who live in the rural South, or young gay black men, or individuals who may have substance abuse or mental health problems, we all recognize those are potential challenges to making sure someone gets the care they need. Can you talk a little bit about what CDC is doing to address those kinds of issues and in working with your partners, particularly state and local health departments? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things we're doing is monitoring how well we're doing as a nation and in, uh, in different states um, so that we can see areas for improvement. Uh, we also have special programs that focus along the entire continuum of care from diagnosis to viral suppression. And one project that we've worked on with um, the Department of Health and Human Services out of your office is um, through the Secretary's Minority AIDS Initiative is the Care and Prevention in the U.S. program, which, which works with eight different states uh, to uh, improve the outcomes along their continuum of care by helping people and systems overcome the obstacles, the social determinants that prevent people from either getting diagnosed when they have HIV or staying in care or taking antiretroviral therapy. And we'll soon be able to see whether those programs have been successful. Great. And I think many of our viewers uh, will be aware of the fact that late last year, uh, the President of the United States, through the Office of the National AIDS Policy Director, issued a set of recommendations about how all of us, not just CDC, but all the other federal partners, community groups, private industry, state and local health departments, can work together better to improve outcomes along every step of the care cascade. I wonder if you could share with the audience uh, highlights from some of the important research being presented by CDC scientists here at the CROI meeting? Well, we have two abstracts from CDC that focus on the continuum of care and present some encouraging results. Uh, the, the first uh, is based on our national HIV behavioral surveillance system, which uh, collects information on three different groups 
um, over a three-year period. Uh, heterosexuals at high risk of HIV, uh, injection drug users, and men who have sex with men. It, in rotation. In rotation. One group per year. Exactly. And the last round was with MSM. And what it showed was that the proportion of uh, men who have sex with men who report having been uh, tested for HIV in the previous 12 months, which is recommended by CDC, uh, has gone up from 63% to 67%. And the proportion of black MSM, who are the most disproportionately affected group in the nation, um, who report having been uh, tested in the past 12 months, has also gone up from 63% to 71%. In addition, when we uh, collected data from men who have sex with men who say that they know they have HIV infection, the proportion who are taking antiretroviral therapy has also gone up from 68% to 77%. So in the beginning of the cascade where we want people to know that they have HIV, to the end of the cascade where we want them to be taking ART and have a suppressed virus so it helps them live a long and healthy life, right. um, we are doing a bit better in the United States for gay and bisexual men. So we're coming, in the US, we're coming closer together with linking prevention and treatment. And probably many of the viewers recognize that individuals who are successfully treated, as you said, for HIV, have, have undetectable viral loads and are much, much, much less likely to transmit virus. So it's good news if people find out they're infected because they can get medical care, and it's good news because we prevent new infections, correct? Correct. And that's the goal, right? Yes, it is. Okay, good. Well, we appreciate your hard work. We appreciate all of the effort taking place at CDC, and thank you for your time, Dr. Merman. Thank you, Dr. Valdeseri. For more information on the conference, visit c 